Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi. Zvachim Daf Chuf. Chuf, we begin two lines off the top of the Amid, Ki Asur Abdimi Amar So this goes back to yesterday's discussion regarding Kiddush Yodayim Raglayim, the Kohen would wash his hands and feet in preparation for the Avoidah. And the question was, what if it stays overnight? Meaning, let's say he stays up until the next day. Must he rewash or not? Typically, regarding ordinary carbon materials, if it stays overnight into the next morning, Lina kicks in. Lina invalidates a new material. Fresh new day requires fresh new uh, material. But regarding Kiddush Yudayim Raglayim, we had this Machlekes yesterday, right? According to Rebbe, well, uh, his hands have to be rewashed. Because yesterday's washing is no longer valid for today. Whereas Lezab Shimon disagrees. He says, I can wash today and work for the next 10 days straight without rewashing. So now, according to Lezab Shimon, who says, Ain Lina, staying overnight does not, Mayelis, does not impact, does not adversely impact, doesn't invalidate his wash. Here comes a question. He asked Rabdimi. When Rabdimi came from Eretz Yisrael, Amma, he quoted Rabbi Yechen, who quoted Ilfa, who had a question. Boy Ilfa. According to Blessed Rabbi Shimon, who says, Typically, Lina does not impact a coin's washed hands and feet. Which means to say, you can use yesterday's wash for today's avoid. Assuming he was not Messiah Das, he, he kept focused, he was on, you know, on the program, he wasn't uh, diverted, he didn't leave the, you know, the Migdash and got involved in other things. So, So that's in terms of his washed hands. Now comes a question. Make here, Mayushi Apostle. What about the water in the cure, you know, tank itself? Which is meant for washing hands and feet. If that water stays out overnight, out meaning, you know, they would, uh, we'll see later. Uh, if it was lowered into the ground and connected to the underground water supply, then it sort of becomes nullified and connected to the greater world water supply and therefore is unaffected by Lina. So certainly if it's down there, it's okay. But if it's out, up on top, on the floor of the Migdash, and it stays overnight. Make your Mayushi apostle, should they become puzzled and invalidated for tomorrow's wash? Mriyaminin, shall we say? Hani Lamai, what's the purpose of this water? Of course, the Kiddush Yudayim Raglaim. Now, the irony will be because Kiddush Yudayim Raglaim Gufayu, the actual washed hands and feet that themselves lay puzzled by Lina, are unaffected by Lina, according to this opinion of Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon. Certainly, the water which is meant for that. Uh, purpose will remain unaffected by overnight as well. Or Dilma. Or you can say the hands are one thing, the actual water material is something else. Given the Kodush Lub Klishar, since that water has become sanctified in the holy vessel, and now you have a tangible, you know, carbon slash service material before you, Mipsali, it becomes affected by staying overnight. And Rashi says, as opposed to the hands and feet, well, there's no water anymore. It's been dried. There's no lina. Ain't lina al milochol, says Rashi. So the hands have been dried. As opposed to the water, which is here intangible. So again, the question of the of Shimon. Washed hands and feet. Stay valid past the, uh, the next morning. But what about the water in the kir? If it stays out overnight. Rav Yechen quoted Ilfa's question... Then came Rav, Ravin, Kiyosu Ravin, Amar Rabbi Yirmiya, he quotes Rabbi Yirmiya, who quotes Amar Rab, Rabbi Ami, who quotes Amar Rabbi Yechnan, that in fact this question was resolved soon after. Hadar Pashit Ilfa. Ilfa came and resolved the question. It depends, uh, you know, according to your opinion, regarding the, the hands that are washed. So basically the, the water and the kir shares the same um, status and fate as the hands. The same machlekes that applies to the washed hands, i.e., Rebbe, yes, Lina. Rebbe, Lezab, Shimon, no, Lina. Likewise, is the status of the water. In which, according to Rebbe, Shimon, it's unaffected by Lina. So he, uh, he confronted Rabbi Ami. He says, how could you suggest that, in fact, Rabbi Yechon resolved the question? I have my own personal account where it seems Rabbi Yechon was not sure of how to approach this question. Rebbe, he called him Rebbe. Ato Imekin, you're suggesting as such. Ella, rather, Hachi Amar Basi, Amar Rabbi Yechen. He quotes Mishmei the Ilfa himself. 
as follows. Kir shleshikum berev. So they failed to lower the kir underground, as we explained before. So it wasn't done prior to sunset. Mekadesh menel by the slide. If a kain would like to do some nighttime activity, nighttime service in the Beis Hamikdash, they would burn the uh, the fats on the mizbeach, which requires you know kiddush and raglaim. You can use this water at sitting out. Ulamachah, but the next morning, ainu mekadesh. He will not rewash. And, and the question was Vavinma, The question was posed on this halacho. What do you mean? Next day there is no kiddush. Ulamachah ainu mekadesh means the light sarech lekedusha. He doesn't need to rewash. Because last night's wash is still valid. Or that's not that's not what he had in mind when he was saying Aidan Bakadish meant to say but maybe that's also true, but what, what the main point that he was saying was that you cannot use this water the next day anymore. Should a kind come into the Basamid the next morning to wash, he cannot use this water which had stayed out overnight. And this is going even according to Rosa Bashim who says now the coin's hands, which have been washed yesterday, are still valid to the day, but the water itself, which is tangible carbon material, tangible service material, which stayed overnight, becomes possible. I don't if slow Lina. You can't use it the next morning because it got impacted by Lina. So which way? Water under care, yes, Lina, or no or, or no Lina. The lay Pashalan. And he didn't respond, he didn't have an answer, meaning there was no resolution in terms of the status of the water in the Kira, according to Rosh Hashim and Bilmar, and you, Kapashat Le Mifshat, you're so uh, sure about this, that it, in fact, Rabbi Yechanan resolved it. Clearly, he wasn't sure about it. So basically, the, the question still remains, which is, according to the Shita, which is Rosh Hashim, who says, the Kayin's washed hands and feet, can outlast the next morning. There's no lena to them. What about the water in the Kira itself? Tashma, he comes another attempt at proving this point. Ben Katan, that was his name, a generous person. Also, Shneem Asadad Lakir, he fashioned 12 spigots to the uh, Kir, which corresponded to the amount of the, uh, the number of Kihanim who were involved in the carbon atomic. This way, they all can wash together simultaneously without having to line up and wait. What else did he uh, fashion for the Kir? Afu Asa Mukhni Lakir, he fashioned this, um, this pulley system for the Kir, which will enable them to lower it on the ground. During you know the night, shaloi you of nifsol and belinas the water and the kir will not become affected by lina. Apparently, lina is a concern regarding the water and the kir. Now, who's speaking here? Is it Rabbi? Is it Rabbi Lazar Shimon? My love will assume Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon. He it's him speaking, and apparently he agrees that the water and the kir could not stay overnight. Loy, no, not necessarily. So Rabbi, perhaps this mission is going like Rabbi, where of course lina is a factor. Really, Vama the ratio. Reb Lezer, Reb Shimon. Well, if the prior discussion in the Mishnah is in line with Reb Lezer Shimon Shita, we'll assume this uh, segment of the Mishnah as well is lined up with his opinion, the Seifa Nami, which speaks about the Lina concern on the water. It's also Reb Lezer Shimon. Now, what's the earlier segment in the Mishnah? Tani Reisha. So the Mishnah there speaks about the placement, you know, the location where they would um, do the uh, Shita, of the par on Yom Kippurim, which was kachi kachim, which requires tzafan. You see, uh, kachi kachim, chatos, etc., needs to be shechted on the north side of the, of the Azara. Now, before you proceed with the Mishnah itself, I'll just to give an outline, a configuration of the various zones in the Azara, which we're going to speak about. We're going to focus on three particular zones. So, let's go from east to west, from down up. You enter the Azara. First, you have the uh, area where the uh, Yisraelim are meant to be. Mokem Drisas Ragle Yisrael. Then you have an, another section, 11 Amis, for the Kihan. It's called Mokem Drisas Ragle Yisrael, where they would, uh, you know, would roam. That was to the east of the Mizbeach. Then you have the Mizbeach itself, to the north of the Mizbeach, so meaning between the Mizbeach's north wall and the Azara's north wall. That's really considered the side of the Mizbeach, the north side of the Mizbeach. That's the ideal place for doing the Shechit of Kachi Kachim. As per the Pasuk, Al Yerech HaMizbeach Tzafayna. You know, the side of the Mizbeach, the north of the Mizbeach, north of the Azorah. The section above that, closer to the Heichel, would be called Bein HaUlam Vela Mizbeach, between the Mizbeach and the Ulam, which is the entry area to the Heichel. So what happens on the north side of the Azorah, up over there? So, regarding where to shecht korbanis, 
with the Shecht Kachi Kachim. The ideal place would be in, in section 1, to the right of the Mizbeach, directly between the Mizbeach and the north wall of the Azor. Next would be further up, you know, closer to the Hechel, which is holier, so to speak, right? Which is, uh, you know, one notch above. Ben Ulam and Mizbeach. So again, if it's on the north of the Azora, even though it's not directly to the side of the, of the Mizbeach, that also qualifies. And then you have section 3 towards the bottom. Again, the north of the Azora, but in front of the Mizbeach, between the Mizbeach and the east wall of the, of the Azora. So it's on the north of the Mizbeach, but not directly to the north of the of the uh, north of the Azar, but not directly on the north of the Mizbeach. So that would be considered, let's say, section 3. Just, you know, for clarity's sake. So we would use Shecht, ideally in section 1. Second best, which is, as Rosh Shemini says, even section B qualifies. Rebbe adds, he says, even section 3, which is further from the Hechel, but still it's on the north of the Azara, is okay for Shechita's Kachi Kachi. Now, they would actually place the par of the Kayin Gadol in section 2, between the Ulam and the Mizbeach, on the north of the Azara. That's where it was. So let's see the Mishnah. Baloy Eitzel Parai. So the Kohen uh, Gadol approached his par, his chatos, Uparai Hoyoimeid, and where was the par situated? Bein Ulam and Mizbeach. Again, on the north of the Azara, the northern half of the Azara, but between the Ulam and the Mizbeach, which is section 2. Rosh Ladorim, Parai Lamarav, his head facing Dorim, his face. Turn to the Marab, the Gemara Yuma explains why. The Kayin would stand in the following fashion, on the east side of the, uh, of the animal, upon the Marab, facing the west. So bottom line, they would place the par in section 2. Now apparently, that's corresponding to Reza Rishim, who says that, uh, you know, that uh, zone qualifies. Because according to uh, a Rebbe, why would they place it there? They would place it uh, in section 3, which, you know, which is further from the Hechel, which is more appropriate away from the, you know, holy area. So, uh, apparently, th- this mission is following Rav Lezer of Shimon in terms of proper placement of the, of the carbon. So, Man Shamas led Omar bin Ulam Lumazbeach Tzofan, who uh, qualifies that area, section 2 as Tzofan, for Shechita of Karbon, is Rav Lezer of Shimon, the Sanya, as we find in the Bryce. Is it Tzofan? What constitutes Tzofan? Mekir Mizbeach Tzofani, but Kais Lazar Tzofani between the north wall of the Mizbeach and the north wall of the Azor. So opposite, the entire Mizbeach is called Tzofen. Divrei Rezer Yehuda, he says, that's where you do the Karbanis. That's called Ad Yerach HaMizbeach Tzofen. Rosh Hashim and Moisev, he says, okay, for sure, granted. But I want to add another section. Even Zone 2 qualifies. Af Benu Ulam HaMizbeach, even Zone 2 qualifies as well. Rabbi Moisev, he says, even Zone 3. Af Mokim Drisas Ragli Kehanim. U Mokim Drisas Ragli Yisrael. Even Zone 3 is okay. Avol menachalifas will afnim, but behind the ulam, Beis Achalifas was a place where they would, uh, you know, take care of the kehanim's uh, attire. So that was at the, um, you know, at the far ends of the ulam. The ulam was an anterior area to the heichel, which had protrusions to the right and to the left of the heichel. That's called Beis Achalifas. So behind that, it's certainly out of sight because it's, it's, you know, it's obstructing the mezbeach. So if you shech there, it certainly doesn't qualify, and is not allowed. Avol ben achalifas will afnim. From the Khalifa is inward, Hakalmoidim all agree, Shapasal, it's not a place to do karbanis. So the fact that the uh, uh, mission describes the, uh, the par as being situated, Bain Ulam and Mizbeach, which corresponds to Razab Shimon's zone, apparently it's him speaking, not Rebbe. Well, says the Gemara, what, what do you mean with his bro? Contrary to what you're saying, why are you saying Rabbi Lezab Shimon here? It's only his sheet of a Rebbe, and it's not uh, consistent with Rebbe's opinion. Of course, even Rebbe would agree, of course. Of course, if you could even do the carbon on section 1, which is further, certainly section 3, which is closer to the Hegel, which is holier, of course that qualifies. Will the Shem of Lord Rebbe? Look, hash the Rebbe. If even Rebbe, Ad Rabbi Yesu Rabbi Yudah Moisev, he adds to Rabbi Yudah. Rabbi Yudah is the one who says section 1. He comes and adds section 3 as well, which is much further than the Hegel. Wouldn't you think he agrees? With Rosh Shimon, that section two qualifies as well. Of course, it does. Ad the Rebbe Rosh Shimon, like you don't think he's adding to Rosh Shimon? Mean you don't think he agrees that section two qualifies as well? So even according to him, why didn't they? Um, why can't they put it in section two? Right. So the Mishnah, which describes the par as being in section two, could certainly be consistent with Rebbe too. Well, says Gemara, no, no. Anan, we hachi kamrin. We meant to say like this. This was our, you know, a proof that in fact the Mishnah is in line only. 
with Rabbi Lezer of Shimon. Because if in fact this Mishnah is like Rabbi, shouldn't they better have placed the par in section 3 with the Kehanim walk? With the Shreilim walk. And Rashi explains. The whole life, Oirach Ara, it's not the Rachers, La Kruvi La Hechel, to bring it so close to the Hechel, which is a holy area. You would assume they'll try to keep it at a distance. At a distance. So the fact that the Mishnah places the par in section 2 indicates that in fact it's not going like the Rebbe. Well, says the Gemara, El Amai. So what are you telling me? What are you suggesting based on this calculation? That in fact, the Mishnah which describes the placement of the par as, in, as being in section 2, that is going like a Rebbe of Shimonhi. And that explains why. They put it in that location. You know, but even he would agree that section 1 is certainly suitable. So why they uh, go so close? They didn't need to. Like more, let them place it mekir mezbech tzfaini at kois lager azara tzfaini between the north of the mezbech and the north of the um, of the azara. Right? Between the north wall and the north wall. Section 1 which is certainly appropriate and ideal. So you must say there's a special reason. You must say the reason why they preferred closer to the Heichel is because Yom Kippur, he's up all night, the Kohen Gadol is fasting. He's in a weakened state of health. This way, the closer you get it to the Heichel, the less he has to travel with the blood into the Heichel. Here as well, according to Rebbe, that explains why they placed it in section uh, 2. Mishim Choshel Kain Gadol, to address its weakness. So certainly this Mishnah can be in line with Rebbe Lezer Shimon, likewise according to Rebbe. It still will still justify why they placed the parsa close to the Hechel. So you have no proof. Who's the author of this Mishnah? There goes our whole attempt at resolving our question regarding whether Lina affects the water in the Kiar, which was mentioned in this, in this Mishnah. But perhaps it's going like Rebbe, who says Lina is always a factor by Kiddush, Hedan Raglan. Certainly, if it affects his washed hands, it affects the water and the kira as well. The question was going to Rebbe Shimon, who says the Kohen's ha- hands are unaffected by Lina. What about the water and the kira? We leave it unresolved. Continues Gemara. Amar Beichlan. Kiddush Yodav Ragl, Vatumar Sadesh. So Kohen gets up in the morning, early, it's still dark out there, in order to do Trumar Sadesh. Shovel off a little of the um, ashes on the mezbech, which he would take off and put it on the, pl- on the floor near the mezbech, which was miraculously, the ashes were absorbed into the ground. He goes and washes his hands and feet in anticipation of that Avaidu. Now he'd like to carry on the next day. Must he rewash? No. Lamachar, according to all opinions, he doesn't have to rewash. Why? Because he already washed. At the beginning of this. Uh, New day of Avaidah, even though it's pitch black outside, they would do the Tumas Adesh when the, uh, you know, the, the crow would start uh, crowing, when the rooster would start um, crowing, the, to, the, the, it's called Kreis Hagever. Technically, it was still night. But the Kiddush for Tumas Adesh is still valid and effective for the next day's work. Now, Laman, whose sheet are we, are we going with? Eila Rebbe, is it according to Rebbe? Ha'amar Paslalina, Rebbe says, well, uh, if you transition into the next morning, you go past daybreak, new day, new requirement. Lina, invalidates your wash. How could you just keep on going with the same wash? Are we going to come to that sheet too? Well, of course. Omar, he already told us. No need to rewash your hands. I feel like even if it's a 10 day stint, continuous stint in the base of So it's not just about. Uh, it was the beginning of the new day. Even if you wash today, you can still use it tomorrow. So what's Rabbi Yechon's point? If it's going to Rebbe, it shouldn't work. Going to the other Shita, it goes without saying that it works. I'm Rabbi. Loilam the Rebbe. You're right. We are following Rebbe's Shita. Who else that Lina will invalidate? But you're meant to know that Lina, this uh, Lina invalidation is only Midrab Bonan. When I tell you, there's no Lina. On Kiddush Adam Reglai. Telling me the rabbanon, lest they come to uh, 
leaving you know real carbon material overnight. And therefore, they invalidated yesterday's wash. And therefore, we allow for some leeway, umoidi, and even. Rebbe would agree that this works. That's small. You know, section of, of time between Kreis HaGever when the rooster crows about Safra until morning if you washed for a Tumas Adeshin come morning it's too short of a time to be concerned like plus Lina we're not going to apply Lina in this case because the whole point is you know to avoid confusion to avoid real Lina it doesn't appear like Lina because it was done at the beginning of the day's work She says, it, it, it's like, it gives the impression like he washed at the beginning. And in fact, he washed in the beginning of the, of the day. Doesn't look like it stayed overnight. Okay, so that's a bias approach. Rava Amar, no, he says, according to Rebbe, you can't, you can't do that. You can't wash for Tumas Adesh and have it work for the next day. You have to rewash, come daybreak. Rava Amar, Rava Amar, Rebbe Lezav Shimonit. Rabbi Yechon's halacha is in line with the laws of Shimon. However, in general, Rabbi Yechon disagreed with him. He says, Lina will invalidate. But this is an exception. So even though Lina, with Rabbi Yechon, would be Paisal Minat Torah, but since this was the first service of the next day's service, it's considered like part of the next day. It's not considered like having washed the previous day. It was the beginning of, of the service day, so to speak, in Beisam Yiddush. The Ruah Rabbi Yechon Dvorov, Rabbi Yechon adopted this opinion of Rabbi Lezbo Shimon that Lina will not impact the, the, the washed hands, only regarding Trumas Hadeshin, which was Betchila Savoida, at the beginning of the new day's work. For Lebis Savoida, as opposed to a coin who washed at the end of yesterday, you know, during the night, to actually do nighttime work. That wash will not be valid the next morning. Okay, so again, Rebbe tells us, beginning of a new day's work in the Mishra Migdash, even though it's still nighttime, it works for the next day. According to Abaye, we're following Rebbe, who says, Lina's the Rabbana. In this case, is no concern. Because it looks like it was already the next day. Rebbe says, that certainly according to uh, Rebbe, it wouldn't work. Lina's the Raisa, we don't differentiate. Rather, Rabbi Yechna adopted Rabbi Shimon's opinion only regarding this halach, meaning to say that since it was the beginning of the next day's work, so it's considered like the next day with pertaining to Avoida, there's no Lina. May here comes a question. Mishnah says, Ru Echav Kayhanim, Shiyarad. So the Kayhanim noticed that the uh, Kayin had just descended the Mizbeach after doing Tumas Sadashim. They brought to a bow, and they come running. And Rashi uh, explains. At this point, we, we're assuming these kahanim were around all night. They didn't just wake up. They were busy doing the nighttime avoid in the base of and they noticed the uh, kohen coming off trumas adeshin. They came running and uh, to do the kiddush yadayim raglaim ubo miyaru. They hurried bekitchu yadayim raglaim nakia, and they washed their hands and feet from the kia. And clearly, uh, you know, it, this uh, Kiddush will carry over into the next day. That will, that will be the purpose of them washing now. Because otherwise they, they were already washed. That's what we're assuming. So they're washing now when it's still pitch black for the next day. How does this work? How does their wash remain valid the next day? Bishlam la by now. Going to Abayi. Dumukim lo Rebbe who learned that the previous halach of Rabbi Yechna, which allows the wash for Tumas Adeshin to be used for the next day, is going like, like Rabbi. Umaydi, Rabbi, and Rabbi agrees. When it's so close to the next day, it's considered one continuum. Between Christ HaGever at Safra, between Christ HaGever, which was when the Tumas Adeshin was done until actual daybreak, like Pasalina, that short time does not activate the Lina. How many Rebbe? So likewise, this mission is following, following Shita's Rebbe. They came to wash, but it was so close to morning, it works for the next day. El Rabba, we're going to Rabba's approach. 
Do mukim lo karelu shimon who says Rabbi Yechon's halacha that the trumas adeshen rinse carries over to the next day is only going like Rabbi Shimon. Avol Rabbi Rukoni to Rabbi Shita, it wouldn't work. In Kriyas Hagever about Safar Pasolina. If you wash during Kriyas Hagever and now it's Safar the next morning, even though it's such a short time span, Lina kicks in. So going to that, how do we explain this Mishnah that we just quoted at the Kehanim, who presumably were up all night, came to rewash, and the wash that they did now, prior to daybreak, will carry over into daybreak, into the next day, Hamani. Who's speaking? E Rebbe, is it like Rebbe? It doesn't work. Posla Lina, Lina would kick in and deactivate the water. E Rebbe Zab Shimon, are we going like that, Shita? In any case, why would they have to rewash? They've been up all night. They were washed yesterday. Omar, he already told us, it lasts for 10 days. The same wash can last you for 10 days. So we're stuck. Certainly this mission is going to the Shimon. That the Kiddush is unaffected by Lina. Ask you a question. Why would the um, the the Gihanim, who presumably <laughs> were up all night, why do they have to rewash? Guess what? They just woke up. Vachma Yisrael was speaking b'kanechad in new fresh Gihanim, right out of bed. Of course, they have to have to wash. So that explains the mission. Yiboilu. Now comes a new shayv. So the kohen washed his hands and feet, and then went outside the base of for a stroll. When he comes back, must he rewash or not? You can see, leaving the base of Ma'usha Toil, will it invalidate Bikidush Yudayim Reglein? Imtim Now, if you'll suggest, in comparison to the uh, prior discussion, that Lina, Loi Pasta, Lina, staying overnight into the next morning will not invalidate. Yeah, Loi Parish, because the Kai never left the Avoid Rashi he says. He was working continuously, there was no diversion. Avli Yitzhiya, but if he left the Migdash, the parish where he separated, so to speak, he left the area. Asuchi Masach Daita, perhaps that triggers a hesach a, a, a diversion, a distraction. It's off his mind. He's no longer on the Avoida track. Perhaps that requires a rewash. Or what you can say, given to be at the last of sins, it's his inability. He can just turn around and come back. So he's still mentally connected to what's going on inside. Loi, Masach, it's not considered a diversion, and he can still. Continue on with the same Kiddush Tashmai comes a riot. Kiddush Yad Raglov, Vinitm. He washed and it became Tummy. He doesn't have to rewash. Mat Bilam. So, Rashi explains. We're talking about a, a specific type of Tummy which only impurifies the hands, like touching Pigal, Noisar, which Midrabarna, Matami, the hands. Mat Bilam, all he does is immerse his hands in the mikvah, Vain Sarach Lakadish. He need not rewash. Yatsu, likewise, if the, uh, if the hands were placed outside the Azara. No worries. Harem Kedushas and they remain in their Kedusha. No need to rewash. And clearly Yitzia will not invalidate. Well, that's only because the hands left and the person stayed inside. Yatsu, like the other Klam Bailan, there's no question. If only the hands were taken out so that the Kiddush remains intact. Kimi Bailan, our question was Yatsu called Gufay Mai. What if his whole body left? What happens then? Tashmai comes another Raya. Shalei Ruchetsu Taim Reglaim. The coin hadn't yet washed. Mikadish Bekhlisharis Befinim has to wash from a holy vessel in the Azara. Kiddush b'klisharis b'chutz. Let's say he washed outside with a klisharis, but location was off. Or location was okay, it was inside, but used a ordinary kli. You have to wash inside with a kiyar, with a klisharis. Or he dipped his hands into a regular mikvah, in a, you know, cave water. Then he served. His avayda is psu. End of quote. Let's uh, analyze the alochas in the b'raisa. Tama the Kiddush B'Klisharis B'Chutz. Clearly the problem is because he washed the Klisharis outside. But Ha Kiddush B'Fnim V'Yatsa. But apparently, let's infer from here. Problem is because he started off outside. But let's say he would have washed inside. And then he left. Apparently it's still okay. Avedasik Shera. Only if he started outside. But if he washed inside properly, apparently it's okay even if he left. Says him or no. Dilma perhaps. Kiddush B'Klisharis B'Chutz Yechidami. Perhaps when the Bryce speaks about him having washed outside, doesn't mean he personally left the Azara. You know, in the Afik Yodov Labar, 
He simply stuck his hands outside the Kiddush and did Kiddush there. So in similar fashion, on the flip side, Hakidish Bifnim, if he would have really washed properly inside, Biyatz and then left, meaning just his hands leave, that's okay, as we explained before. The Api Gyat Levar, if he just extended his hands outside, Ksher, of course it's okay. Aval Yatza called Gufim to Boilach, but the question still remains, if he fully left the Azor, he walked out, what happens then? We're not sure. Amalei Rav Zvid, or Papa have a right. Tashma, here's another right. So the coin left the Azor. Yatza Chutz, Mechitza Chemes Azor. Im Lishais, if he left for a while, for a long span of time, Toin Tvilo, when he returns, he has to immerse in the mikvah. That's the halacha before entering the Azara, you have to immerse in the mikvah. Even if he's sure, if it was just a short absence, he need not re immerse in the mikvah, but Toin Kiddush, he has to rewash his hands and feet. So clearly, Yitzia leaving invalidates. Amalei says, I'm not speaking that he just simply left. He left to tend to his personal needs. And halacha is, in that case, he has to rewash or immerse. So proper needs requires an immersion, and just lighter needs is the rinsing of the hands and feet. Amalei hocha of my skinon, was speaking on shiyotzel hasech raglov, take care of personal needs, lahat al mayim, lighter needs. So that's a totally different story. Habahedik tangla, how could you say it? The beginning of the Bryce is referring to this type of scenario. The Bryce itself later on addresses those cases already. It says, Kol Mesech Raglov, Toyon Tvilo, tending to needs requires Tvilo, Kol Matal Mayim, that requires Toyon Kiddushan Raglaim. Apparently, the first part of the Brysa is not speaking about that case. Yes, it is, Tani. Sometimes the Brysa would sort of present in general terms, but the Rafarshan then specify in greater detail, but it's all one and the same case. However, just simply leaving blindly perhaps would not um, necessitate a new wash. Toshma, comes another right. Again, the question is, the Kayin washed and walked out of the Azorah and came back. Must he rewash or not? Toshma, Poro. This is the Paraduma, which was processed outside the Azorah, actually, in the next mountain on Harazesim, where it was shechted and burned. The question is, does the Kayin, t- taking care of it, have to wash his hands and feet? It's not in the Beis Hamidosh, but it's still somewhat of a, you know, sort of a carbon. Rabbi Chiyah, Rabbi Yisif, Omar, yeah, Mekadosh, he has to do Kiddush, but Klishar is Bifnim, using a regular Klishar in the Azorah, and then he can leave and do the Paraduma outside, Viyaitse. We view the uh, avoid of the par like an extension of the internal avoid. First, he has to appear inside, like any other carbon, then go outside to do the par. Rav Yechon Amar, there's no point in going inside first. Anyways, he's going out. I feel like you can do it even outside. I feel like even a, a regular kli, a regular container. I feel like kli, you can use even an earthenware kli. So clearly, according to all shittas, Yitzia will not invalidate. Because here he's outside. And um, the, uh, the Kiddush that he did inside still remains uh, active and valid. Says the Gemara, Amra Papa. Well, Paraduma is a totally different story. Shani Para. Hoyel Bechol Maser Bechutz. Because in any case, the entire process is taking place externally. And likewise, Le Pasla Balin Yitzia, leaving the Migdash will not invalidate it. Because in any case, it's an exterior, external type of uh, activity. Yach, if that's the story, if that's the case. So what's the point of even washing if you're going outside? Because you have to do some, you know, a similar process which resembles, which corresponds to what's going on in the Migdash. That's the requirement, even though technically it's a totally different circumstance. So again, we had this Shiloh regarding Gitzia by Kiddush, and we left it unresolved. So certainly if he just sticks his hands out, there's no question, it will now invalidate. The Kiddush. And certainly by Paraduma, no problem either, even if he's entirely outside. But for a regular Kiddush, a regular Avoida, and he walks out of the Azara, that, remain, that question remains intact. Now comes a new question. Tuma, Mao Shatoyel, the Kiddush, Yodaim Raglaim. So the Kayan did Kiddush, and then, uh, then his hands became tummy. Does it invalidate the Kiddush? Now, assuming Regarding our previous discussion, Yitzia leaving the area would not invalidate. But there's a difference. The Gavra Chaz, because in that case, the person is still, uh, you know, he's still suitable. He can really come back and do the Avoid. Nothing happened to him. There was no change of status in the person. So I can understand why the hands retain their washed status. But in this case, where the Gavra Chazi, 
where the person is not able to do Avoida. So answer Tommy. Asuchi Masachdati, perhaps. That triggers a, 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 distra- a diversion. He's distracted. You know, Siach does. He's off the program. In which case, that requires a new wash. Or oh, you can say, given the Hadar Chazi, since he can just come back and you know, fix himself up, he intends on the, right, uh, immersing his hands in the mikvah, and then, you know, returning to the Avaidah. Darkly. So he's careful. And he'll be careful to, you know, keep his uh, focus. Keep cognizant, protect himself from anything which is tummy, anything which would, um, you know, make the person tummy and validate him, etc. Well, it must have died. Toshma, he comes at right. Kiddush yad of raglov v'nitmu. So we discussed this before. Koyin was mekadesh, and then his hands became tummy. Mat bilam v'entzarch lekadesh. All he does is immerse his hands in the mikvah, and again we're speaking about a tum which only affects the hands. Vein. Tzorach Lakadish without need to rewash. There you go. Tuma does not invalidate the Kiddush. Well, says the one, Nitmu Yadav. Let me boil him. Never had a question. In this case, where only his hands became Tummy, of course, it, unaffects, it doesn't affect the Kiddush. Kimi Boilo Nitmu Kogufi. The question was, let's say the, enti- the Kayin's entire body became Tummy with a proper Tuma, which is Matami, the entire person. So in this case, he has to really immerse fully. But the question is, is that enough? Is it sufficient just to remove the tumma, but the kiddush, the diamond line remains intact, or no? You see, there are two separate things happening together. The tefillah sort of removes the, the negative effect of the tumma, but the kiddush elevates him higher. It's sort of a positive element. So perhaps that positive element can still remain intact. As long as he removes the tumma, he reverts back to his higher status. As the Gemara, what do you mean, called Gufay? His entire Guf becomes Tame? Of course it doesn't work typically. In any case, look what's happening. Keeping the boy Lumevat, head of Shemesh, he has to immerse in the mikvah. He has to wait for sundown. That's a long span of time. As Sukha Masal died, we'll assume he's going to be distracted and diverted. In which case, the Kiddush, in any case, will become invalidated. There's no question what happens. Of course he has to rewash. No, he could go into the Tami, Samach, Lushke Sacham, we'll speak that it became Tami right near sundown. It's just a couple of minutes. Quick mikvah, quick head of Shemesh. So perhaps he can still stay focused and retain his Kiddush. Toshma, here comes a riot. From the Allah of Paraduma, just discussed. Right, Para. Rechib Reis of Amar, Mikadash Baklusharis with Nim, Viyaitse. He washes in anticipation of the Paraduma's avoider in the Azar, then goes out to tend to the Para. He could even do it outside to begin with. Right? So the question is like this. He's washing to take care of what? The Paraduma. And we all know the para, regarding the Para, the Tamui Mataminile. There was an interesting practice. They would be Matame, the Kain, who would take care of the Para. And the reason was because they took him, the. Uh, Antagonists of the Chachamim, who were very literal in their interpretation of the Torah, they didn't accept the oral uh, interpretation. So when they uh, saw the Pasuk says that a Tahr fellow has to do the Paraduma, literally Tahr, the Chacham said no. Even if it's a Tful Yayim, as we learned the other day, even a fellow who came to me immersed, but has yet to experience nightfall, he's Tahr enough to be able to, to do the Paraduma. And they would, you know, highlight their opinion to undo, to override and undermine the position of the tzedukim. So they would purposely be matami the kain, make him tummy, immerse in the mikvah now in a state of, of, of tful yayim. Before Arab Shemesh, go ahead and do the parah. So clearly he became tummy. So first he did kiddush, then he became tummy, then he goes straight to the parah duma, so clearly tumma does not invalidate the kiddush. Beautiful raya. The parah, the tumuyin tamminile, would be matami him outright, the snan, as it says, mataman hayu ha service a parah. The kain who would burn the parah, they would be matami him first, but be all nice, and then they would be. Mat bilim, immerse him. Why? Lahoit similim and shal tzdukim to undermine the position of the tzdukim. Who'd insist? So I know they would say bimura vei shemesh. It's a lesson of head of shemesh nightfall. Only a fellow who had experienced head of shemesh completed as a purification process. Only he is qualified. Hoi sanases would the parah be made with? Though, you know, only those people. So clearly he became tummy. Shemamana doesn't that prove our point? Loy pasla 
Bo Tumma, that Tumma does not get in the way of the Kiddush, which happened prior to the Tumma. Well, also the Gemara came being arrived in Pura Duma. It's on a different track. Shani Pura, perhaps Pura is different. Hoyl, Tful Yaim, Le Pasal Basin, that Tful Yaim is not disqualified regarding the Pura Duma, as we just explained. So, you know, it has different guidelines, different standards, and perhaps the, the Tumma would not affect the Kiddush as well. But uh, in contrast to an ordinary karma. Yachi, so if that's the case, Lamadu the Makadish. If in any case, it's a, you know, this Kiddush has no parallel. You don't find it in other avoides, in other karbanas. So what's the point of doing Kiddush at all? Kein avoid beinon. The system on the para is meant to, you know, correspond some, in some, somewhat, in some way, resemble the process of the karbanas in the Besamidash. Although it's not exactly identical, and therefore you can't prove anything from there to our discussion. Okay, again regarding Lina. So... The kind of washes hands and feet. What if he stays overnight? According to Rebbe, Lino kicks in and validates yesterday's wash. According to Elizabeth Shimon, it does not. We had a question regarding the water and the cure. According to Elizabeth Shimon, that the hands, the washed hands, remain okay. What about the water and the cure? We're not sure about that. We had a chiddush or a If you wash for Tumas Adesh, even though it's still pitch black, it can work for the next day. It could be going to Das Rebbe. We have two different ways to understand that. It's close enough to the next day. It's part of the next day's work. We had a question regarding Yitzia. So if his hands are just uh, extended out, that's okay. But if his entire body leaves, does that invalidate the Kiddush? And regarding Tuma as well. Just his hands becoming tummy, that's okay. What about his entire body becoming tummy? Certainly by the Paraduma it works. But we have yet to resolve what happens regarding ordinary karma. All the best to you, Natsachar.